Then we get a spirited away. Uh, so first off, I mean, let's just be honest. Greed, duh, right? You know. Um, actually, Miyazaki has stated, and this is where Miyazaki gets kind of interesting. Um, he stated that uh, Chihiro's parents represent the Japanese during the 1980s, who were constantly consuming things and had all this money and were, you know, on this giant consumption binge. It's like, okay. Um, uh, but anyway, the um, so you know, we have this, this clear animal, you know, uh, thing here. But then we start dealing with other stuff. Now, the residents of the, the bathhouse are clearly uh, you know, yokai and variations on yokai. I believe the radish spirit was an original uh, conception at Studio Ghibli. Um, but everything else are, you know, you can see various uh, yokai in there um, and various interpretations of those. It should also be noted, I'm talking about yokai, um, uh, yokai are not consistently represented. Right? Like there is a, there's an idea of this is what this yokai generally looks like, but different people draw it and represent it in different ways. So sometimes in here you're like, oh, it's kind of that yokai, probably. Because they decided, well, we think it has sandals, right, or whatever. Um, um, but basically the yokai here are background characters, except for the river spirit. Uh, the river spirit, which I don't have a slide for, I forgot to put that in. Uh, the river spirit is, again, pretty obvious. It is a metaphor for cleansing yourself. Right, getting the gunk out and, and resolving that. Um, Miyazaki said that that was inspired by a time he spent cleaning the river. He's like, oh, all this stuff. And he kind of imagined this, this creature. Um, no face, as far as I can tell, is not based on anything. It is an original idea of Miyazaki's. And it's interesting because um, no face is very much like a yokai. And, no, and what we see here is, again, you would think, OK, we have this animal. You know, we have this creature, whatever. No face is clearly the antagonist, right? We have a clear antagonist creature now. Uh, now, you could also say, you know, it gets redeemed in the end. But still, this is a remarkable shift for Miyazaki. Um, Haku is a Chinese dragon. I mean, again, duh, right? Don't need to go uh, too deeper into that. It's also worth noting that the Chinese dragons traditionally do have water powers. They are creatures of water and control of water, thus the connection to the world. But, most important, this is a movie about resisting becoming an animal and staying human. Chihiro's whole goal is to not lose herself in that bathhouse. Not trying to descend, but stay Chihiro. And to revert her, her parents from animals into humans. This is a 180 from the, the, the general direction and themes we've seen up to this point in Miyazaki's movies. This idea that being human is um, precious in and of itself. Um, one of the things I actually noticed uh, about uh, this movie and rewatching it, this screenshot uh, specifically, is that she has two different expressions here. The expression on, um, in the reflection is much more passive than her regular expression. Because Chihiro is, and I think this is a perfect summation of this movie, Chihiro starts passive, right? And what she has to do is learn how to be active and learn how to do stuff, which is one of the things that traditionally kind of separates humans from animals. Humans imagine futures, and they actively try to get there while animals are more reactive. So now Miyazaki has a very different way of seeing things. And we see that um, even further in some of his later films. Howl's Moving Castle is about a character who is, based on a book, obviously, um, who is struggling with turning into this animal, right? He has this monstrous part of him that is now represented as an animal, but the solution is not rejection of one or the other. It is fusion, it's synthesis. It is Howell coming to appreciate his powers, appreciating this part of himself, and understanding this and having control of it, right? Neither are good, neither are bad. They are different aspects of us. Um, and you could argue this goes even further with Hanya, right? Because, which, it's a little more man. It's, it's, that's what it is. Um, I mean, very clearly. Um, but importantly, you know, um, Ponyo is an animal that wants to become human. Right? And the point at the end is 
basically being both, right? It's saying, you know, it is good to be human, but it's also good to be a fish, right? Both of these are good things to be in that sense. Um, so we see this wonderful kind of fusion of Miyazaki's views. Now, I should point out, this is a little um, highfalutin for my typical tastes in terms of analyzing this stuff, right? These are entertaining movies. Um, Miyazaki is clearly working themes into this, but I don't want you to spend too much time worrying that Miyazaki is hidden messages in all of his films, right? Um, um, you, know, you can go a little bit too far with a lot of this stuff. Um, but I think you know, that these trends are pretty clear in this class. Um, my website is thinkarchaeology.com. We have an amazing Discord community where we talk about this kind of stuff all the time. Um, and we'd love to dig deep into these aspects of anime and, um, and geek culture in general, but particularly anime and, and this stuff. Um, so that is the end of my presentation. Thank you all very much for sitting there uh, quietly this entire time. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. This one? Yeah. Um, this is an art book about um, Miyazaki and Yasuo Otsuka, who's also a legendary animator, and their collaborations. Um, so it's basically a bunch of stuff. You guys can come up um, later on and through it if you like. Um, a bunch of different things they worked on, Castle Pagliostro, that bit, bit in Lupin, um, Horse Prince of the Sun, um, and some other things, uh, Puss in Boots, Panda Go Panda, so a bunch of like you know art drawings and all that kind of stuff. So it's a really neat art book of all this stuff. And um, I should point out, um, so this is um, a starting point. Uh, Hayao, it is a collection of writings by Hayao Miyazaki, particularly like interviews he's, he's done, things along those lines, production notes and so forth. So if you're curious more about kind of Miyazaki, um, that's a good place to start. Any other questions? I know there's another, yes. Back with uh, Princess Mononoke. Mm -hmm. You talked about Yakul never leaving um, no, Ashitaka. At no point in the movie did Ashitaka really leave who he was, as opposed to the prior movies right. where Kiki left who she was. And, right. Uh, yeah. And, and, and I thank you. I'm going to bring that up. Um, it's one of the interesting things about Monoga is it is you know, the protagonist does not break with animals. That is not the point of the film. The point of the film is about representing all of these factions kind of in their consistent state. Right. No one's trying to. You know, the, the wolves are not trying to become human. Right. Or vice versa. It's a very different. Uh, uh, theme. Yeah. So it's I like Yashitaka, but I can't live with humans, and I still eat humans, so he's like, well, that's okay. Can, you, can I still visit you or whatever? Right, exactly. Any other questions? <coughs> Last chance. So. All right, thank you all very much. Have a good rest of the time.